I am Dr. Harvinder Singh. I am a urologist and a renal transplant surgeon. Presently working at Primary Super Specialty Hospital, Chanakyapuri. Today I will be talking about the kidney stones. Kidney stones are hard deposits of minerals and salts which are deposited on the inner surface of the kidney, which is the pelvic alveolar system. Kidney stones are common in all age groups, but are more common in men as compared to females. Now, how does a patient of kidney stone present to us? Most commonly, the patients with kidney stone present with sudden onset of pain in the flank, which may be associated with nausea, vomiting. Sometimes the patients have blood in urine, which is called hematuria. Some patients with kidney stones present with signs and symptoms that are similar to that of urinary tract infection. Very rarely, the patients who are neglected over a period of time present with signs and symptoms of uremia or the kidney failure. What are the causes of renal stones? The most important cause for the occurrence of renal stones is dehydration which leads to production of highly concentrated urine. Then, second important cause is the imbalance of pH of the urine. Some stones form preferentially in the acidic urine like the uric acid stones and cysteine stones. Some stones occur preferentially in the alkaline pH like the struvite or the infection stones. And some of the diseases that are associated with the occurrence of renal stones include gout, hyperparathyroidism, then in standard malabsorption syndromes and urinary tract infection. Some of the risk factors which are associated with the increased occurrence of renal stones include the family history of uh, renal stones, then patients who take high protein diet and patients who have sedentary high lifestyle and extremely high outdoor activities. The common type of stones which occur in the kidney include calcium oxalate stones, cysteine stones, uric acid stones, phosphate stones and some of the stones associated with medications. Complications resulting from untreated renal stones include recurrent urinary tract infections. Then patients can have repeated admissions to the hospitalization because of recurrent episodes of pain. Patients can present with hematuria. Then patients may present with progressive impairment in renal function resulting in renal failure. Once somebody presents to us with the patients with the symptoms suggestive of a renal stone, we need to investigate the patient. The first investigation which usually is done with somebody presenting with flank pain is the urine examination. The urine routine examination will show presence of red blood cells in the urine. Then an ultrasonography which is a very easily available modality is offered to the patient. Ultrasound can easily pick up the stones in the kidney. but may not be able to pick up the stones which are present in the ureters. Therefore, any patient who presents with sudden onset of severe pain in the flank and whom we are suspecting a stone should undergo a non-contrast CT scan of the kidney ureter bladder region or the non-contrast CT of the whole abdomen, which is the gold standard modality for diagnosis of renal stone. NCCT, in addition to confirming the diagnosis of stone, gives us a lot of information like the size of the stone, location of the stone and the degree of the dilatation which is occurring in the kidney because of the stone. All kidney stones need treatment. The exact modality and the accurate modality of treatment will depend upon the location of the stone and the size of the stone. For very small stones, it can be treated with the help of a medical therapy which includes the alkalinization of the urine, adequate hydration and the analgesics on the SOS basis. Very large stones require surgical intervention. These days, minimally invasive surgical modalities are available with less morbidity and negligible mortality to the patient. For the kidney stones, the most commonly available modalities include a percutaneous PCNL or percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Then we have RIRS which is the retrograde intrarenal surgery and another modality which is was previously very famous in the treatment of kidney stones is the shock wave lithotripsy. Now, how to select the appropriate modality for the treatment of renal stone? There are certain guidelines for that. For stones which are less than 1 cm in size, shock wave lithotripsy as well as retrograde intrarenal surgery which is RIRS are equivalently effective. For patients where the stone is 1 to 2 cm, either, ES, either retrograde intrarenal surgery or 
the PCNL is the modality of choice and for the stones more than 2 cm in size, PCNL is the procedure of choice. Uretric stones, again the treatment depends upon the size of the stone. Small uretric stones, usually up to the size of 5 mm, can be effectively treated with medical therapy in the form of hydration, alpha blockers and painkillers on the SOS basis. Large uretric stones are treated with the help of endoscopic surgery in the form of URS for the lower and mid uretric stone and flexible ureteroscopy or which is also known as a retrograde intraranal surgery for the upper uretric stone. The commonly asked question is how to prevent the occurrence of renal stones. The most important aspect in the prevention of renal stones is adequate hydration. One should take plenty of fluids in the form of plain water or lemonade at least 3 to 3.5 liters per day so that he forms around 2 liters of urine per day. Then one should avoid excess salt intake because those who are having excess salt intake are more likely to form stones. One should cut down the amount of animal protein which he or she is taking because this also leads to increase occurrence of stones. The dietary modification in a patient with renal stone in addition to the general precautions which I have already discussed in addition to those, those who are recurrent stone formers the dietary modification will depend upon the previous stone analysis or the results of previous metabolic evaluation which was done to in these patients. Thank you.